Our speaker today is Aaron Goff, the CEO of Embold Credit Union, formerly Clackamas Federal Credit Union. Uh, Aaron is uh, Aaron has worked in the credit union industry for more than 30 years, starting out in the IT department. Uh, he, he's originally from Missouri, where he went to college, earning degrees from the University of Missouri and Park University. Prior to discovering his passion for credit unions, his path was a convoluted one. Working at various times as an upholsterer, piano tuner, cook, veterinary technician, and research scientist. Please welcome Aaron Goff. <laughs> It's a very nice way of saying I couldn't figure out what the hell I wanted to do with myself <laughs> until it accidentally happened to me anyway, right? So uh, thanks for inviting me to be here, first of all, for lunch. Um, I was asked to speak a little bit about careers and jobs in the credit union, and I'm going to do that, but it, I'm going to do that also in a bit of a convoluted way. Um, Cindy mentioned that it's been 30 years. It's actually been 32 years this year that I've been in credit unions. I started down the road in Albany. Oregon, those of you familiar with Albany. Um, I was uh, an aspiring but very inexperienced IT person um, 32 years ago and was really looking for any kind of job. And I will confess to you that I did not know what a credit union even was. And so I was looking for a job in the newspaper because that's what you did back then. And the ad that I circled said, Federal Metals Credit Union. So I disregarded the words credit union because I didn't know what they were. And I focused on the metals and the federal, and I thought, okay, it's probably a manufacturing firm. Maybe they're making things out of metal. Maybe they have a government contract. So when I got there, I was really confused when it was a bank. Um, but I pretended like I knew what I was doing. I went in, I got the interview, and I ultimately got the job. And um, that was, I had no idea that was going to be the beginning of a career at that time. It was just a job because I really needed to eat. Um, and so I, I knew that I liked that job. I liked the people. It was, uh, it was a good work environment. People were great. I learned a lot of things. Um, but I, I tell people all the time, I was really slow on the uptake because it really took me probably 10 years working in credit unions, actually for three different credit unions before I really kind of figured out what's great about credit unions. And um, I actually remember the exact moment when that light bulb went off for me. And I, and I like to tell the story. I'm going to tell you the story, and then I'll tell you why I'm telling you the story. So 22 years ago-ish, I was working in Kansas City, Missouri, for a credit union that, that was specifically chartered to serve police. So most of our members were either Kansas City, Missouri police officers or their families. Uh, and... So it was a little bit of a different kind of a credit union. I had been there not too long at this point. And for whatever reason, they must have been desperate for people to go to this trade show because they sent the IT guy uh, to go to this trade show. And I ended up being there with my friend Mary, who ran the mortgage department. And it was a law enforcement trade show, which if you've ever been to one of those, they're very interesting, right? There's booths with guys with guns, and there's ammo, and there's Kevlar vest guys, and there was an assault vehicle in the space and then there was us with our little cup of ink pens and we're talking about checking accounts and car loans we were not a very popular group at this <laughs> trade show so we had a lot of time to chat which we were doing and um as we're talking this older gentleman walked up to us in fact he kind of made a beeline right up to mary in particular and he said um mary shay i'm so and so and you probably don't remember me but I will never forget you for the rest of my life. I thought, well, that's, this is an interesting conversation already. And so he tells the story. He said, 10 years ago, um, my wife and I were, de we were desperate. We were broke. Um, my wife had a bad gambling problem. We had more debt than we could pay. Um, the house hadn't, we hadn't made a house payment in three months and uh, we were worried about foreclosure and we were just literally at the end of our ropes and we didn't know what to do. We called lots of different places. Nobody really provided the kind of help that made much difference to us. And he said, finally, somebody said, well, if your mortgage loan's at the credit union, you should at least go down and talk to the credit union. And so we did. And um, because you were the mortgage person, they put us 
with you and we sat in your office and you spent probably two or maybe three hours with us going through all of our financials. You figured out ways to refinance some stuff, consolidate some stuff. You figured out a plan for the house. Um, and so you even went so far as to call around and get some gambling addiction help um, services lined up for my wife. Um, this is so long ago, by the way, there was no one of her bets off and all that stuff that we have now didn't exist then. And um, he said that conversation changed our lives incredibly. We went home, my wife, we were so encouraged. My wife called one of these places. She got help for the gambling problem. She got a lot better about that. Um, we got ahead of the debt. Finally, it took time, but the plan worked. Um, and it was just like life changing. And he says, I just wanted you to know. He said, my wife died about three months ago. But I wanted you to know that the last 10 years of her life were so much better because of that conversation with you. And I thought, wow. I mean, it was a very emotional conversation, right? Everybody's kind of weepy and they hug and he walked off. That's still not the moment, though, that the light bulb went off because he walked away and I looked at her with kind of a newfound admiration. I said, that was amazing. You, you must remember that like it was yesterday, right? And she said, you know, I wish I did, but I really don't. And I'm like, how could you not remember that? It was amazing, right? That was so incredible. She said, you have to remember that I've had that same conversation a hundred different times with a hundred different couples, maybe. And that was the moment the light bulb went up for me. And I realized, okay, this is not just, you know, collecting a paycheck, punching the clock and going home. This is like, we're actually having real life impact on real life people and we're making a difference. And it, it just, I don't know why it never occurred to me. Maybe it was because I was in IT. Maybe it's because we didn't talk about it enough in the credit unions that I work at. Um, but that was the moment that I realized, okay, I will never work for any other organization that is not a credit union because it's just amazing what we can do and do do in the community. So um, I tell that story to every new batch of employees that starts at the credit union. And I do that because um, I want them to know what kind of impact they can have. And it, and it doesn't matter. I tell them it doesn't matter what department you're in. I was in IT. You can be in the accounting department, marketing. You can be a branch employee. It doesn't matter. We all contribute to an incredible thing here. And um, I tell them that because I want them to know that. And I also like to gauge kind of where they're at with it because we want to hire people that have a passion for that, right? We want people to care a lot about the why we're doing what we're doing. We don't want people to come down to just collect a check, don't really care to go home, and that's it. So I tell you all of that because you know we're talking about jobs. That is the first and foremost thing that we look for when we're recruiting employees at the credit union is that passion, that care for other people, that desire to have an impact in the real world. Um, that's the number one thing. Everything else we can sort out, but if you have that, you're in good shape with us. Um, so actual jobs, careers, I'll just tell you a little bit about kind of where we're at in terms of uh, scale and who we hire and what kinds of jobs are available at the credit union. We're about 150 employees now. Um, we've been growing, continue to grow. And um, so we have a lot of, uh, probably the majority of that, definitely the majority of that is, is member facing front office folks. So people that work in branches, we have a traditional phone call center, we have ITMs in the branches now. Some of you may have seen. So we have a whole call center of people that man knows. Uh, we have a department called Digital Services that does chat, online chat with members. And they also process all the online applications that come in for loans and uh, accounts and membership and all. Um, we have all the back office stuff that a lot of companies have, marketing, accounting. We have a risk management team. Um, who am I forgetting? IT, of course. Uh, Community development, we have an amazing community development team. Um, and then, of course, we have our executive staff, myself and my C suite, and uh, um, always hiring. So, if you know folks that are looking to get started in a career, um, doing something that matters in the world, um, a lot of the entry level positions, the branch staff and the call center staff, and even some of our back office folks are fairly entry level. Uh, we don't have a ton of educational requirements. Like I said, it's really that passion that matters. Uh, and then after time, people tend to get promoted up and become managers and become other things. So, um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, any questions or anything I can speak to?
Management positions? Uh, we have about 30-ish management level positions at the credit union, a couple of two or three different layers of management now we've gotten that big. Um, some of our teams, like the call center, for example, we just split into two management groups because it's big enough now that one manager just can't handle that much. So still growing and still adding more positions. We're recruiting for a marketing manager actually right now. Okay. If anybody knows anyone, love to hear about that. I, I have a faculty member coming in whose husband is looking for a job. So yeah. That's why I asked her. And he's Marketing. got a degree in banking. Well, I, I'll have to look at I've got his yeah. resume. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? No, Mark? thank you, Aaron. Uh, I just want to kind of give a testimonial to the, and I'm not saying anything about banks, but credit unions. Uh, I'm a member of it was Clackamas Federal now in Bowl, just for the reasons because it is very community minded. I had a, I've been in the real estate industry for about 30 years now. I had a client a couple come to me that are they were in their 60s and uh, had just refinanced a year and a half before, but somehow didn't realize there was another loan out lying out there that they hadn't made a payment on, and they were at risk of being foreclosed upon. We called the credit union. The credit union it wasn't yours, but it was a credit union. And uh, we went through a payment plan because, of course, what happened, they hadn't made their payment for so long, their credit was shot. Mm -hmm. And so they couldn't refinance. Mm -hmm. And so they were faced with selling the property, but not really being able to replace the property because their proceeds wouldn't be enough. The best move for them, and I'm a real estate, of course, I would love them to sell, make that information. But the best move for, was for them to stay. We worked with the bank. They allowed them to make payments for one year and then allow them to refinance that same loan. They're still in their home. And, uh, you know, so I just, if you're, you know, talking about community minded, but also what you do, if you want to be happy about what you're doing, I love what uh, uh, Ted, no, Dave, yeah, Dave said about uh, his inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, what you want to do is help people and have a great time. So yeah. great work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, uh... It's maybe a little counterintuitive, but I tell folks at work all the time that the collections team doesn't get enough credit because when you talk about having impact, the collections team is on the front lines of that, right? They're the ones that can make such a difference to people that are struggling. And the hardest part is getting people to, to call us because when you, you know, when collectors are after you, it's not your first preference to have phone conversations with them typically, right? But we approach it a lot differently than, than your typical collectors do. Um, we are looking for solutions for you. Right? That's what we do. Good point. Thank you. Sure. So, so where's the bulk of your long portfolio talent? And is it the real estate and development and, it's, and auto? And what, what, do you, what do you guys finance? Well, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly diversified. So we do have a, a business services team. We do commercial lending. So we have a portfolio of, you know, forgive me if my numbers are a little off, but I think it's around 30 or eh, maybe closer to $50 million in commercial lending. But we, we have a lot of real estate loans. We do a lot of car lending. Um, we have in, uh, unsecured loans, credit cards, uh, really any kind of loan that you need for the most part, we provide. So when you talk about what's the portfolio contained of, it's, it's pretty diversified across all of those different buckets. Was there a part two of the question? I didn't quite hear that. Okay. Anyone else? Cindy? So you said there weren't too many educational qualifications to start. Did you have would you hire a teller right out of high school? Oh yeah. We all often do. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've got I think four or five of them now that are under twenty one. We have to watch them at the Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Karen? Tell us a little bit about the name change, how that came about, mm -hmm. why, mm -hmm. just that little process. Sure. For sure. Um, so we for we're what 60, I think we're 67 years old as an organization this year. For 63, sorry, 64 years of that, we were Clackamas, some variation of Clackamas. We started at Clacko. Um, I think there were some other small iterations in the middle. And the reason was because we only served folks that lived, worked, worshipped, or went to school in Clackamas County. That was our pretty good call that our field of membership. So this is one thing that makes us different than banks. We can't serve everybody. We have to have a defined field of membership. And that was it for 64 years. So the name made sense when that was true. 
in 2021-ish, we um, expanded that field of membership to now include Loma, Polk, Yamhill, Washington, and Marion County. So it's a six county area now. And once we did that, the name made less sense, right? So we were hearing uh, from a lot of folks in you know Marion County that didn't think they could belong because it's black in this federal credit union. So we knew we needed to do something different with the name in order to, to uh, get rid of that perceived barrier hurdle. And so, you know, the the process of a rebrand is lengthy. It was a two, two and a half year process. We had marketing people telling us all kinds of things. So I won't regurgitate all of that. Where we landed on that, why we landed on that word though, is that it, it kind of encompasses a couple of words that we like and that we use a lot in our messaging and in our conversations with members. Part of that is the bold part. And so we do a lot of financial literacy training, teaching. Um, we work with candy schools. We work with a lot of different organizations to come out, teach people how to, you know, balance their checkbook, how to make their check, their their paycheck last all the way to the next paycheck, uh, how to get a car loan, what all these weird mortgage words mean and how and how that works. Um, we do an adulting 101 class for the younger people that are just you know, getting out on their own and learning to pay their bills and figure out their money and things. So we do a ton of that. And the idea behind that is to give people the tools and the, and the power that they need to manage their stuff, right? To make them, to give them the confidence to be bold in their decision making. So we like that element of it. The, the M part of it, um, another word we use a lot is empower. I think I just used it. You know, we like to try to empower people that have those skills and those tools uh, and so those kind of words mesh together and came up with in bold as, as a name that is not geographically restricted. Right. Thank you. Anybody else? No, well, thank you Thanks for so coming. Appreciate yeah. it.